Good morning, Restore Community Church. It is my pleasure to be with you today. Uh, for those of you that may not know, my name is Dustin Pruitt, and I'm one of the pastors here at Restore, and it is my pleasure to be bringing you a brand new series as we're going across these summer weeks. Hopefully, I'm hoping for the dog days of summer. I want some heat. Give me some 20 degree weather already. Uh, but during these dog days of summer, we're going to be talking about loving the Lord your God. What, what is it to love the Lord your God? So over the next seven weeks, we're really going to be chewing through this series, uh, starting off today. And this, the scripture that we're really pulling from for the series is in Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 40, which I'm going to read to you right now. Starting in 34, it says, Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment of the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. And all the law and all the prophets hang on these two commandments. I mean, that uh, Jesus kind of laid it out for him. He, he wasn't mincing words or anything. Uh, but to give you some historical context, just in the Torah alone, which is the first five books of the Bible, you have Gen Genesis, uh, oh my gosh, Genesis, <laughs> Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Numbers, the Torah here, there's 613 separate laws. Now, uh, outside of that, there's some additional writings that the, the Hebrew community that would look at, but they weren't considered Torah. Uh, it was called the Mitzvah and also called the Mishnah. There was an additional 1,500 different laws or, or right ways of living. So we're, we're 2,000 plus laws here that are on record that you should be following. If you want to make it to heaven, if you want to be in right standing with God, here's your list. And so you got the, the Pharisees coming up to Jesus to be like, hey, my man, uh, you know, we're going to trick you here. Uh, the verse says to trip him up, which we'll go on to that in a second, but to trip you up. Hey, man, what, what, what's the best of these? Because they've been discussing this for generation and generation. The, the conversation with, within the Hebrew community is discovering God's heart and, and putting our own thinking kind of upon it that there must be a hierarchy. We value things this greater than that, so God must value this greater than that. Which law does he value more than one another? And so it's so, so important to them to get the, the answer to this question. So let's kind of break it down verse by verse. It says, hearing that, in this, starting in verse 34, hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. Now in this context, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they weren't buds. They, they, they weren't uh, a, a friendly sex within the Hebrew community. Um, they were they were somewhat enemies at the time, but they were working together in this instance to trap Jesus. Uh, he, he united many people, uh, not always in the best way, uh, and try to trap him with these loaded questions. Uh, verses 35, 36, one of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question, teacher, which of these is the greatest commandment of the law? Rabbi, which is... Which of these is the greatest commandment? And this Pharisee, they send in an expert. This is a guy, he's got it backwards and forwards in his brain. He's memorized the Torah, the, the mitzvah, the Mishnah. He's, he's locked in. We're, we're going to send in our, 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 the dream team, if you will, the number one. Um, and the expert comes in. He comes to Jesus. And the word for test here that we have is the Greek word perazo. Perazzo, um, I, once again, I'm somewhat bad on uh, pronunciations of a language I'm not fluent in, but perazzo, uh, and it means to trap or to trip up. 
So the, the whole point of this isn't a genuine desire to know God's heart at this point. All that's suddenly left behind. They're not wanting to really realize and connect to God in a new way, in a stronger way, in a more clear way. They're there to trip up Jesus, the one that God sent to them personally. But so his mind is made up. He's hostile to Jesus. Now we're here in verse 37. It says, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. That, that If you look here, I, I'm reading it to you so you don't see this, but there's double quotation marks here. And it's not just the normal, well, I, I hear it's somewhat different in the UK where it might be one if I'm just saying my words are in the one in the two, which is what I'm used to, there's double. So you got you got extra marks here, which means Jesus is quoting somebody else. That he's quoting uh, something from Deuteronomy six to love your Lord, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. He's like, guys, you, you it's already in there. You guys know it. This is the top. You want the top? This is the top. In Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9, this is what it says. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The Lord your God with, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give to you today are to be the one on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk to them when you sit down at home, when you walk the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands. Bind them to your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. This that we just read, it's called the Shema. The Shema, if you will. Because the word, hear, O Israel, is Shema in Hebrew. Now, it's not just saying, hey, Hey, open your ears. Can you can you get a, a, a we'd call them a Q-tip, a cotton swab in your ear? Clear all the gunk out. Um, clear it out because you need to hear what's going on. This Shema means to, it's a joint, a listen and obey. That words of authority are coming down to you that you need to listen and obey. So hear, O Israel, listen and obey, O Israel, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. That, that so he's pressing it in. That there is the command. You want a number one? There's your number one. And the next, this, this love word, let's, let's, let's continue on this, this original language uh, 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 studying here is ahavar. This is love here. And it's not, this isn't a romantic love. As much as we, we all love a good romantic comedy, a Sleepless in Seattle, a You've Got Mail. I know more actors than Tom Hanks have done these, but it's not just a romantic love, but it's to give your loyalty, to give your allegiance to somebody. This Ahavar, this Yahweh, this number one, this your Lord is asking for your allegiance, is asking for your loyalty, is asking for with every bit of you, your, your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. He's asking for every little bit. And this isn't in the context of, hey, here's a bunch of rules, guys. I'm sorry, here's the list. Let's go down. I'm, oh, also number one, love the Lord God with all your heart. This is somewhat smack dab in the middle of the story of God rescuing his people from slavery in Egypt. This word of love, this loyalty, it's, it's not in, in rule following, it's based out of salvation and relationship and reaching out to rescue. That, that's the love our God is reaching out to us with. It only makes sense that he'd ask for it back, right? Am I wild of saying that? It's only natural to think of him asking for it back with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all your strength. Jesus goes on. Um, it says these commands. Oh, no, I'm sorry. God went on in Deuteronomy. He says these commandments that I give to you today are to be on your hearts. 
meaning your ways of thinking, your ways of feeling, these, these pathways, these natural tendencies. Oh, that's just who I am. How, what, what can I do? That's just who I am. He's asking for that to be turned towards him, that our thoughts are about him, that our feelings are about him, our desires are about him, that everywhere we go, Everywhere we go, it's about Jesus. It's about our Lord, our Yahweh, uh, the I am who is with us. Well, let's go back to Matthew. Uh, here we are um, in verse 38 and 39. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. It's like 1-1-B, one, one or 1-1-A. One, one like you can't separate the two. They are intrinsically linked. Jesus is saying that intrinsically linked they is like the other. Love your neighbor as yourself. So he's like, all right, cool. First, you want, you want the top? You want to know God's heart? God's heart is love. God's heart is love me with every fiber of your being. If you have an aspect of your life, of your body, of your mind, of your character, of your soul, you love me with it. The second is you also love the people around you just as much as you would love yourself. And once again, this is Jesus quoting. This is in Leviticus chapter 19. I'm going to start in verse 13. Um, the context here is in 13, do not defraud or rob your neighbor. Do not hold back the wages of a hired worker. Do not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block in front of the blind, but fear your God. I am the Lord. Do not pervert justice. Do not show partiality to the poor or favoritism to the great, but judge your neighbor fairly. Do not go about spreading slander among your people. Do not do anything that endangers your neighbor's life. I am the Lord. That constant reminder. Do not hate a fellow Israelite in your heart. Rebuke your neighbor, frankly, so that you will not share in their guilt. Do not seek revenge or bear grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Remember this. So the context here is a lot about justice in Leviticus. It's talking a lot about just the right way that a society is to function within one another is that we treat people, quote unquote, lower than us with respect, with dignity, and with justice. Uh, there's a quote by Cornel West that says, justice is what love looks like in public. And I think there's, there's, there, there's a core to truth in there for sure that justice is what love looks like in public. And God has kind of laid this out for us way back when in Leviticus. But it's not just those that we consider lower. It's how we treat our enemies. It's how we treat those, quote unquote, greater than us. Those who support another political party. Those who support a ideology, a lifestyle, a blank, a blank, whatever you want to fill it in with, guys. It doesn't matter. They are worthy of the respect. They are worthy of the justice. They are worthy of the love of the Lord. What would, what would the world be like if it was like that? Imagine, let's actually stop for a second and think. What if I loved my neighbor as myself? And my neighbor loved me as much as they loved themselves. What would that world look like? What would, what would the changes be? What would the street, open your front door, what would the street outside your front door look like if it was like that? The, the, the paradise that could bring where it's not man's selfishness of me, 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 feed me, feed my wallet, my bank account, my pride, my ego, but loving one another, 
What would that be like? Back in uh, Matthew, it says, All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So your, 2000, your list of 2,000 boys, all right, this is what I imagine Jesus is saying. Uh, please don't take this verbatim. He's saying, those 2,000 boys, you, you're looking for one and two. Here's one. Here's one A. All the rest hang on that. If you don't do one and one A, all this doesn't matter. You've missed the mark if you can't do one and one A. Love the Lord with everything about you and love your neighbor as yourself. You can't do that. You missed it. The boat's gone, guys. You, you, you read the wrong ticket. You read the wrong book. You've devoted your life to the wrong thing if you don't get that, if you don't understand that. So what does that mean for us? It, it reminds me of another quote of uh, Pete Sc- Scazzaro. Oh, Pete Scazzaro, he says, loving people well is the defining characteristic of a mature Christian. A mature Christian. Like, we're all, we're all walking the path. The Bible says we're all running a race, if you will. Some people might be further along than you. Some people might be side to side, further back than you. We're all in this race together. Not one is not greater than the other. The Bible also says that the first shall be last, the last shall be first. Like, we're all in it together. We're all in this big soup, in this big, as I stretch metaphors further and further. Nobody has value more than one another. But as our understanding grows, as we understand who God is more and more, as he shapes and defines us and makes us new, we should become more more loving. More loving to him, but more loving to everybody around us. To that person on the bus that will not shut up. To, to holding up. Guys, I got somewhere to be. We got five more stops. I've got somewhere. But to be loving. To the somebody hanging out, asking, hey, you got some change? You got some, some barrier change? Stopping and giving them attention and focus, something that they're, they're sorely lacking instead of just walking by. These are the, I'm giving some broad stroke examples here. But we can say we know the Bible, not just the Torah, but the rest of the other 62 books in the Bible. I I think I miscounted 61 books of the Bible. We can know Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts backwards and forwards in our brain. It's, It's tattooed on the inside of my eyes. I read it every night as I shut them go to bed. But if I do not love God with every fiber of my being, and if I do not love my neighbor as myself, all this isn't hanging. It's all scattered on the ground without purpose, without worth, without merit. That's what Jesus is calling us to. So let's love God. Because we're going to go the next six weeks talking about breaking down each segment of what does it mean to love God with all my soul? What does it mean to love God with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my strength? To love my neighbor? What does it mean? We're going to break down intimately each and every one of these. And I hope you are going to join us on this journey. And, And I'm sure you're already on or if you're not, now's a great time to hop on board. Because I'm here to tell you that God loves you passionately. He has given his allegiance to us. His loyalty to us. That there is no other. We are his one and only. We're his bay before anyone else. It's us. And it only makes sense he asked for that in return. Now, I said before that this love isn't a romantic context, but romantic love is only a reflection of what our love for God should be. Marriage is a reflection of what our relationship with God would be. What, what sort of spouse would I be if I said, Hey, babe, Elise, love, 
you know, love me with everything you got, but I'm also going to like, that thing you need, I'm, I don't got time for that. I just don't feel it. You know, I'm not feeling it today. Um, also, I've been talking to this other person. I, I really enjoy... I'm just going to spend more time. I'm going to take my eye off of you, my heart off of you, and I'm going to start giving it over here. It just doesn't make sense. Like, that doesn't work in a marriage. But why would that work in a relationship with God? If my eye is being drawn away by the things of this world, the sins of the flesh, the, the addictions, the, the ego again, the pride again, the love of money. When God is asking, hey, can you look at me? Turn your eyes, turn your heart, turn your, your strength, your soul. Can you look at me? Because I'm looking at you. I'm loving you. Will you love me? Let's, let's just close our eyes and think on that. Oh, Father, your great love. Time and time again. That in your perfection. That you existed before all time, all creation in your perfection. You desired us to be a part. So you made this world. So you made man. And here we are. Every time we've stumbled, you've been there. Every time we scraped our knee, we've turned away. We've been having infidelity, looked at other gods. You were there to call us back. That you sent your only son to come and die for my mistakes, the things I did on purpose, the sins I, I committed. You said, I got this. I'll take this. I'll bear this sin. I'll bear this poison so you don't have to. I'll lay down my life. What great love. What great love. Father, I know I want to give it back. With every atom within me, with every synapse in my brain, every neuron, Father, every fiber, string in my heart, every cry of my soul, God, to you. And to your creations around me, my brothers and my sisters, that I may love them. For if I scorn them, aren't I, do I scorn you as well? How, how, how could I? But God, that we may grow in our love. In all things, in all ways. Jesus, it is to you that we pledge this, this loyalty, this allegiance to, this love to. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Thank you for joining me this week, everybody. Please tune in. Oh, please tune in next week as we're going to continue on and really break into loving God. And we're going to talk about loving God with all of our heart. We're going to talk about what what the meaning of the word heart is biblically, and we're going to, we're just going to get into it, guys. And I think it's so important. Catch up on these. If you miss a week, that's fine. You're away on holiday, that's fine pop back in. They'll still be up on YouTube. They'll still be up on the website and catch them then because uh, we, we're going to take this journey together.
But until then, guys, I'm once again, I'm Dustin. It's been a pleasure to be with you. We'll catch you next time. Bye.